So just to start off with Goodman, uh, look, Goodman was a, it was a good result. They upgraded guidance. Uh, original guidance was for nine percent EPS growth. They've now upgraded that to eleven percent. And you know this company has a history of year in year out upgrading guidance through the year. Um, and it's seen consensus increase their expectations again to thirteen and a half percent. Look, and that's great. But this this business is really you know it's a field of dreams type of business, and it's all about the data center. Uh, portfolio. So you know, put data centers have increased to 37% of WIP um, and these developments deliver almost double the margin that a traditional warehouse um, will deliver. But Goodman, you know, in essence, is, is a development business. Um, and then off that development business hangs a funds management business uh, and principal investments. Look, and, and that's probably where I sort of start to, to draw the line at the current price. Look, it is a great business. I just probably can't be an active buyer today. And that's why I've downgraded it to a hold. It's trading at sort of one times standard deviation expensive, a forward PE of 27 times for a, for a business that will arguably grow around up to 15% a year. So look, it is a great outlook, but you know, development profits really only are a, a reflection of work in progress, the amount that you're completing and the, the amount that you're commencing. And you just don't really see that growing significantly despite these tailwinds from data centers. So look, it's a great business. You know, you definitely hold it in your portfolios, but probably not an active buyer today. Um, and we can just sort of see there, you know, Goodman really is the outlier in terms of multiple relative to growth. And, you know, what that chart doesn't capture is that all of those other REITs distribute, call it 80 to 90% of their earnings. Goodman distributes 30. So if, if earnings growth is only ever a function of ROE and retained earnings, it's no surprise that it's growing faster. Um, and, you know, but to me, that, that multiple is, is pretty fully priced. And then finally, uh, on to Mars. Look, you know, I've titled this A Rolling Wes Gathers No Moss. And, you know, he's back to acquisitions. Um, he's bought some more industrial land. He's bought some more quarries in Victoria. So, look, the result did beat expectations. He reiterated guidance. Cash flow was good. The quarries are performing well, um, which is in line with Borel's commentary. The pipeline for renewable projects in the central west of New South Wales is great. Um, Wes thinks that the business can keep growing at 10 to 15% organically, uh, which, which appears reasonable. You add a little bit of acquisition growth um, onto that. Now, the bear points, look, whilst cash flow was good, uh, net debt 2.3 times is arguably a little bit high uh, for, for equity investors. But for you know, the, the, the major shareholders, it's arguably a bit light. Um, they have their target range of two to three times. And I think equity investors prefer to see it um, at the lower end. Um, you know, look, acquisitions, I think, will continue. Um, and equity investors just need to probably realise that, you know, this will be a fundamental part of this business. And, and you can just sort of see that in the CapEx profile. Um, look, earnings, uh, residential earnings have been flagged as weak, but, you know, he was able to plug a bit of additional earnings from selling some of the sites. So that was good. Uh, electrical services uh, revenue was weak and, and that's unlikely to bounce back until 2025 when some new contracts commence. Um, and look, the asset sale program, they've sold 10 of their flagged 70 mil. They're confident the balance will come in the second half um, and, and that's a bit of a TBC. Thank you.